Hi guys, Nada here and here we have not one but two Aorus monitors. So this is the CV27Q and this is the FI27Q. Since they released their very first monitor a few months ago, they've been very busy with constantly releasing new models and these are the two latest ones. So I thought in this video to just compare the two because they're actually very similar as well as compare them to some of the previous models I've already reviewed. So they are both 27 inch Quad HD monitors, they both have 165 hertz refresh rate, they both have one millisecond response time, they both have HDR and FreeSync 2 technology, only this is a curved VA panel and this is a flat IPS panel. This is pretty much the Quad HD version of the CV27F I've already reviewed and this is the AD27QD on steroids that can do 165 hertz instead of 144 hertz and for some reason it has a new name. Okay, so let's check them out and see how they actually perform. Let's go. This video is brought to you by the Corsair IQ 465X RGB case that offers solid performance, but also a lot of RGB as it comes with three LL120 addressable RGB fans and an RGB controller by default. Check it out using the links in the description below. Just like their siblings, both of these monitors feature an excellent build quality. The metal stand is very solid and there is pretty much no wobble, assuming you have a half-decent desk, of course. The stands aren't very deep, they're about 25 centimeters, so you don't really need a super deep desk either. On the back we see Gigabyte's RGB implementation, which is a nice bonus for some, but thankfully it's not over the top and crazy. Both screens are height adjustable and you can tilt and swivel them, but only FI27Q can be rotated 90 degrees, which actually makes sense considering that the CV27Q is a curved panel, so rotating doesn't really make sense. It is worth pointing out uh, that it's a 1500 radius curve, meaning it's slightly stronger than the most 1800R displays on the market, though admittedly it's pretty hard to notice much of a difference. So in general it's hard to say what is better, flat or curved, and I honestly think it's a very subjective thing, especially when it comes to 27-inch monitors. Both monitors feature a display port, two HDMI ports, so there is plenty for your PC and some consoles, there is a USB hub and a pass-through for your headset. Keep in mind, Aorus monitors don't come with built-in speakers. Now both monitors have Gigabyte's active noise cancellation feature, 2.0, that allows you to remove noise from your microphone recording. But to be honest, our results are too mixed to really consider it an added value. It might be worth in some situation, but as I said before, if you really care about recording quality, just buy a proper microphone instead. Now the feature that I really do like is the OSD Sidekick application, allowing you to control all the monitor settings from your windows using your mouse. Now Gigabyte's OSD itself is actually very decent, and the little joystick works great, but being able to use software instead is a really nice bonus. In there we also find several specific game enhancing features like anti-motion blur and on-screen crosshairs, as well as an upgraded contrast enhancer. So Gigabyte is basically taking on the industry giant, the Asus ROG, when it comes to their monitor features for gamers, and that is something that several older monitor manufacturers still haven't gotten close to. Now, considering the fact these are both fast 165Hz Quad HD monitors, they're actually great all-arounder, so they're fast enough and great for gaming, but they also have enough workspace for day-to-day -day use. When it comes to size, 27 inch is actually quite nice, especially if you're going for a multiple monitor setup, and larger is great if you do have space on your desk for it, but I wouldn't go smaller unless you really, really have to. When it comes to the type of a panel, so in the CV we have a VA panel while the FI has the IPS panel. Now I personally prefer the IPS panel when it comes to gaming and editing, however the VA panel has better contrast and it's usually cheaper. They usually also suffer from motion blur, but in these new VA panels, which is actually in this monitor, they're quite fast and there is barely any motion blur. So at the end of the day, it all comes down to personal preference. What do you like to look at and how much money are you willing to spend on a monitor? So what is the difference between these monitors and the previous models that I've reviewed already? When it comes to the CV27Q, that is just a Quad HD version of CV27F, which was a full HD monitor. Even though the other stats are exactly the same, just the experience of going from Full HD 
to Quad HD makes it completely different. So the Quad HD adds that sharpness and crispness when it comes to gaming, assuming you have a graphics card to run it, but you really notice it in day-to-day tasks, especially when it comes to photo editing and video editing, for example, where one full HD screen is just not gonna cut it. So that makes the CV27Q a much more capable all-around monitor. When it comes to the FI27Q, the difference between this monitor and the previous 8027QD is much smaller because it is exactly the same panel, only they bumped the refresh rate from 144 Hz to 165 Hz. Now that is great news because the 8027QD is an exceptional monitor with great image quality and if you bought one you shouldn't be sad, it just means that the future buyers will have a choice to pay a bit more to get a 165Hz version and the 8027QD will drop a bit in price. I do have to say that the difference between 144Hz and 165Hz is actually quite small and you're not really gonna notice it unless you put these monitors side by side. So. To make a choice if you're going to go for the FI27Q or the AD27QD is going to completely depend on the pricing in your region. Now there is some good and some bad news for both of these monitors. The bad news is that HDR at this price point is still a bit of a mess. They both feature the HDR400 label and take the HDR signal, but I have to make it clear that these offer a very basic level of HDR experience. Now basically it is worth experimenting with and in some games the higher peak brightness will add a little bit but like I've said in most monitor reviews if you're serious about HDR you shouldn't really buy an HDR 400 monitor. The good news however is that both of these monitors offer free sync support but also offer proper G-Sync compatibility. Now the FI27Q is already on NVIDIA's official G-Sync compatible list and Gigabyte tells us that the CV27Q should be added to this list as well. Of course I had to test it for myself and so far I've seen no issues at all in all the games I've tested. Let's just quickly go over the standard test results. Both of these monitors offer a decent peak brightness the FI a bit more so, and both can be dimmed nicely, which is important if you like gaming in a dark room. The contrast of the FI is good for an IPS panel, but the contrast of the CV27Q is a bit behind the typical 3000 to 1 that we usually see on a VA panel, but it's still better than the IPS panels or TN options. Overall, the IPS panel on the FI27Q does have the strongest factory calibration and it does make the CV27Q look a bit weaker, even though both results are still solid. The color accuracy is good on both and the gray balance is great on both as well. When I look at the white point, the CV27Q is a bit on the colder side, but that is something you can adjust in the software, while the FI27Q is actually spot on. The same can be said for Gamma, the FI27Q is near perfect and the CV27Q comes across as a bit darker. When it comes to uniformity, the tables flip a bit. The CV27Q does really well for a VA panel here, while the FI27Q is actually a bit behind its predecessor, the AD27QD. Now uniformity is usually very sample specific, so it's really hard to draw conclusions from it. But honestly, both are fine anyway, so it's not something you should worry about when considering these monitors. Viewing angles are solid for both, and neither screen displays any significant backlight bleed. The IPS panel just takes the win here as expected, but again, both do very well. One last thing to add, if you do spot a bright stuck pixel in the first year of any Oros monitor, Gigabyte will repair or replace it, so that's a nice little extra. Overall, I have to say that Gigabyte is doing very well with their monitors in general. The build quality is great, the panel quality is great, and even though some features like the A and C are completely useless, most of the features of these monitors are quite useful. When it comes to the CV27Q, I have to say it's great that they introduced the Quad HD version of this monitor because the CV27F just wasn't enough for most of the people out there. And this, as I said before, the Quad HD version is much more capable for gaming and for all around use. The only problem with this monitor is its price actually. It costs 499 euros here in the Netherlands and it's gonna cost 
$499 in the US, making it as expensive as the IPS alternatives on the market and 200 euros more expensive than some of the entry 27 inch Quad HD fast monitors. That is a lot of money to spend extra on great build quality and some features. So I do believe in order to be able to compete in this oversaturated monitor market, Gigabyte really needs to take at least 100 euros off the initial price of this monitor. Now, when it comes to the FI27Q, I actually love this monitor, same as I did the 8027QD. It is built really well. It has a great IPS panel. It's calibrated perfectly. It's great for gaming and it's great for day-to-day -day use. It does cost 600 euros here in the Netherlands or 600 US dollars, but that still makes it very competitive if you're looking for a fast Quad HD IPS monitor. Now, do keep an eye on the 8027QD and its pricing because the difference between 144 hertz and 165 hertz is actually not that big all right that's it for today thank you so much for watching let me know in the comments down below what do you think about these monitors and about this review don't forget to subscribe give me a thumbs up and see you in the next one bye